Okay, hello everybody, Hirsch here, and welcome back to Java episode number 10. Now, in this tutorial, we're going to be focusing on how to utilize multiple classes and how to make them work together to get a single result. So, we're going to have two classes, and we're going to have one class called from the other, and in order to produce some interesting results. So, anyway, before we get into this, I just want to mention that um, soon we're going to be starting up with graphics. So, if you are interested in making graphics in Java, you should definitely subscribe and stuff and be ready to see some awesome tutorials. But anyway, um, let's get right into this. So, we have our class A and class B that I've created here, and you can do the same. Um, so, just have class A and class B. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go into class A, and we're going to create our main method just like we've done before. So, public static void main string um, args. And guys, I know my keyboard's loud. I've told you this before. I'm a, I'm sorry about that, but there's not much I can do. It's just a loud keyboard. Um, anyway, so we have our main method here. So, basically, what this program's going to do is we're going to get two inputs from the user. And we want to perform some incredibly complex mathematical operation. But let's say I'm the one who's getting the input from the user. And I'm going to focus on doing that. So I want someone else to do these incredibly complex operations. So what would be really easy if I could make a class that handles getting the input. And someone else could have a class that just handles all of the heavy math stuff. Yeah. Um, you get the idea. So basically one class is going to be handling I.O. and one is going to be doing actual computation. So to start this off, let's just create a couple of integers. We're going to have int a, uh, we'll have int num1 and num2, and then we'll have an answer. So for the purposes of this tutorial, we're not going to do anything super complicated in terms of math, but you'll get the same idea. We're just going to multiply two numbers, but it's the same thing, basically. I mean, you could put in whatever you want. So what we're going to do is now we're going to go into class B. So in here, because we're multiplying two numbers, that's what we want to do, because that's our incredibly complex operation. We need to get the two numbers from class A. Now, in order to do, in order to do this, what we need to do is we need to create something called a constructor. So what this is, is essentially you just say public, and then you use the name of the class, so class B. And then inside these parentheses, similar to a method, you put in the two arguments you need. So in this one, we're going to have an int A and an int B. Now, so here's what we want this class to do. Um, first of all, we want to have two other variables that it's going to set. So you'll see what I mean in a second. So let's just create a uh, static int a comma b. Uh, actually, we'll call these num1 and num2 just for to make things a little bit more readable. And we'll also create an answer variable. So we'll have the same variables in the other one as in the other one. So what happens here is we're going to call this class and we're going to pass in int a and int b. And very similar to when we're working with methods, we're just going to set our local variables, which are here, um, so local to this class. We're going to set these to whatever we've gotten as our input. So we're going to say num1 equals a and num2 equals b. So basically, this does this is very similar to methods in the sense that we've taken num1 and we're setting that equal to the input A, and we're taking num2, and we're setting that equal to the input B. So now what we need to do is we need to create something that's actually going to do something, um, namely a method that will actually multiply them. Because the constructors, usually what they're used is for getting data and maybe calling a method, but the method is still what actually does any of the work. So we're just going to use our standard method creation, so public static void. Um, and we'll just call this multiply. And here's the thing. So you may be first of all thinking that we need arguments, but we don't because we have these two variables up here, which we can access from this method. So we're all good on that. But here's the thing. We're going to be calling this method, and we need to get back an integer. So we're actually going to change this from void to int. Uh, int. So that sounded kind of weird when I said it. But anyway, to int, um, just so that we can get back our integer. And for now, I'm just going to say return 0. Um, 
this is kind of common programming practice. When you don't have anything yet, just gets rid of that error there. But we'll change that in a second. So anyway, basically all we have to do is we need to multiply the two numbers. So we need to say ands equals num1 times num2. Oops, there we go. So now we have our answer. And now all we have to do is return it. So, so far, this is basically the same as working with a method that's in its own class. Um, you just take in the arguments, even though we already had these, we didn't need any arguments. And you just multiply them together and set it to a variable and then return it. Very similar to what we've done before. Also, one thing I'm going to mention is the reason I made these static integers before is because I knew we were going to be putting this into a static method. Um, I know I haven't explained that yet, but just go with it for now. Just use static things. Yeah, um, it'll work better. Anyway, so let's jump into class A again, and let's actually, whoa, I don't know if you guys saw my screen flash, but anyway, we'll head back into class A, and now let's start actually multiplying our numbers. So first thing we're going to want to do is uh, create a scanner. So we're just going to say import java.util.scanner. Uh, let's get rid of those extra lines there. And we're going to go down here and we're going to say scanner in equals new scanner system.in. So hopefully you remember that by now. Um, but that's basically how we construct a scanner. Now here's the interesting thing. You guys don't know this yet, but actually all the scanner is is basically, well, it's another class. So if you know how to construct a, construct a scanner, you know how to construct a class because that's all we're doing here and we're gonna do the exact same thing so first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna get um, input for our variables so we're gonna say num1 equals in dot next int Oops. Uh, I don't like how it keeps putting in these automatic things and num2 equals in dot next int and this is not great programming practice normally you would give the user some prompt that they need to enter something but we're just doing this quickly we're just taking the input so now we need to call our second class, and then we need to actually multiply them, get back the value, and print it back to the user. So here's what we're going to do. Very similar to what we did in the scanner, um, we're just going to say class B. So that's, whoops, that should be B, because that's the name of the class, as scanner is the name of the scanner class. And then we can name it whatever we want. So we're just going to call it CB for class B equals new, new, there we go. Uh, class B. So we're taking the name of the class again, we're creating a new instance of it, and here is where we enter our two arguments. So we're going to put in num1 and num2. Uh, there we go. So basically all this does is it creates an object CB of the type class B. Um, well actually it's this is the type, it's the same though. Anyway, uh, that's kind of confusing, but basically um, it's going to the class B um, Oh, sorry guys, my voice is kind of dry. Uh, it's going to the class B class, and then it's creating a new object called CB of the type class B with the two arguments, num1 and num2. That may have been incredibly simple to you or incredibly confusing to you. It's hard to tell, but I'm just going to go over this again and try to make this a little bit clear. So basically, all we do is we created the object CB of type class B. Now the num1, com comma num2, all it does is it goes into class B and finds a constructor that has two integer arguments. And that's right here, that's what we have here. So it goes and it goes into this constructor and it does everything we said to do here. Now basically the main difference between constructors and methods, I don't know if I've gone over this before, but basically constructors will just be the name of the class and then the arguments and they usually don't perform ev any operations or anything they just set variables and things they can but usually you don't so anyway now we've called we've created this um what's it called object sorry we've created this object of type class b and now we have all of our variables set up so now all we have to do is set ands equal to and now what do we do well basically we have this object cb but the thing is CB, it'll go into here and it'll look, but there is nothing that's just CB because if we had multiple methods, it wouldn't know what to give us. So we're just going to do CB.multiply since that's the method we want to run. So we're just going to do CB.multiply 
Um, and then what it's going to do is it's going to set answer equal to CB, which is this object, which is, as I explained before, it goes into here and looks for everything. And then we're going to, and then what it does is it goes to the multiply class with no arguments because there are no arguments and it runs it. So now, uh, because multiply returned an integer and we set it equal to this integer here, we should be good to print this all out. So dot out dot print line and so now all we have to do, let's just run this program and we're going to multiply 3 and 2 and we should get back 6 and there we go. You have now successfully created another class that can multiply things and though it seems really simple it's kind of a cool concept this is one of the core features um, that lets you work in larger groups because it allows many people to work together and you actually use classes different classes a lot um, an example was the scanner there so here's another thing that we could do the way we did it here it wouldn't really work if we tried to create multiple objects so the other thing that we could do is rather than creating the static int out here we put it inside here and then we're going to change this so it requires arguments um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to say this uh, ooh, we're getting errors oh okay so anyway because we put this inside the class uh, inside the constructor we don't need the static anymore so also we don't need and so we can take that out okay so now we're just gonna have to take this all out so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this up a little bit and the way I showed you before is not how you'd usually want to create a class just because you'll have trouble using multiple copies uh, multiple objects of the same type it's a little confusing but um, you'll understand it more later so anyway now we need to get arguments so we're just gonna have int a int a and int b so similar to any other any other method or anything all we have to do is just perform the same operation so we're just gonna have int ands equals a times b we're just doing everything in one line just to make it a bit this simpler we're just gonna return ands so what can this do now well first thing we can do is we can look back here and we've created the class successfully in the same way we want to before but actually the interesting thing is because this is not really do any, doing anything we don't, we don't need this at all because we're taking the arguments again here so what we could actually do is we could just create a public class class b uh, with no arguments and then as opposed to putting in our arguments here we just take them out of here so now what it does is it finds the constructor class b except with no arguments so it knows not to go to this one because this one takes two integers it just goes to this one and it does nothing so now we have an empty object and then what we can do is we can say cb dot multiply and now we can put in our two values so we're just going to say num1 um, comma num2 so now what we could do is we could potentially put in another two and a three and we get the same result so that may seem like a trivial change but let me just quickly show you why it makes a difference so basically um, now what we can do is we can create cb2 equals new class b with no arguments and then what we could do is let's just create some more numbers so we're just going to have num3 num4 um, just for demonstration purposes so there we go so we have four integers and we're just going to set num3 equal to 4 and num4 equal to 5 and here we go so what we're going to do now is we're going to say uh, we're going to create a second variable and it's 2 2 and you understand why we're doing all this in a second equals so now we're going to do the same thing so cv dot multiply except now rather than putting in num1 and num2 we're gonna put in num3 and num4 so here we go now what we've done is we have two objects of the same whoops there we go so we have two objects of the same type so we have cb and cb2 each executing different operations so 
if we demonstrate this, we're just gonna have another system dot out dot print. Whoops, system dot. Oh my gosh, I can't type. Dot print line. Print line. And two. Um, here we go. So now, if we run this, we can put in a two, a three, and we get six and twenty because what it's done is it's multiplied our first two using this one, and it's multiplied the second two using this one. Now this is one of the most important things about classes and this is basically the most valuable feature in obje object oriented programming. Because the thing is, we have two objects each of the same type that are performing the same operation with different numbers and this is the most efficient way to handle data like this. Um, because basically we could just keep calling this and it's really fast. So anyway, that's basically how you create a class, how you use it. If you want to work on a project with your friends, that's the best way to do it or something. I don't know. Um, or if you want to do it in a company or something, this is how they do it. They use multiple classes, and then they all call each other and work together. Um, by call each other, I mean like the classes call each other. Um, so just to clarify. Anyway, so basically that's how you create multiple classes, and it's incredibly powerful when you're trying to create larger scale applications. So anyway, as I mentioned before, in the next tutorial we'll be starting um, graphics in Java. We're going to do simple graphics and we'll start to work our way up. So it's really important that you understand classes, how they work, how they interact. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and share the video because that helps me out a lot. And subscribe if you want to see any more content. So anyway, Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.